What is going on, Headliner Nation? Week 10 fantasy football is here, and it's time for the injury report with Dr. Ethan Turner, who apparently, uh, yeah, I'm sorry to wake you, Ethan, but uh, we got some injuries to talk about. How are we doing tonight? I am doing so well, Jake. So well. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a good week. Just a good week. I mean, it's getting better, right? We're here. We're hearing some na- some news of some big names potentially returning. I mean, what else could we possibly ask for at a time like this? Nothing. We got our button. We, if you can't see, we, we got, got the button. button. We got our button. And so we're pretty stoked about that. Yeah, absolutely. 100% stoked about the button. Yeah. Jake, uh, I, got so- button. I actually got something else I think you're going to be stoked about. So I want you to close your eyes. Why? We're going to get a little weird here. Just just close your eyes. Oh, God. I want you to take yourself to a real tranquil place. And I want you to think about somebody practicing no knee brace expected to be removed from the IR this weekend and return on Sunday against the Texans. Jake, we got our chub back. Yes. Nick Chubb is returning. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're after. This is the news of 2020. We'll bring back the Chubb. The, the Chubb is back. Sponsored by Manscaped. The <laughs> Chubb is back. Heck yeah. I mean, what's crazy about this is we talked about this when he got injured, you know, weeks ago. And if my memory serves me correctly, and I'm usually pretty smart, I'm almost positive that Dr. Ethan Turner said we could expect Nick Chubb back week 10 and here it is week 10 and you were exactly right here comes nick chubb back and uh, i am i am super pumped about it you and me both i cannot wait to see nick chubb back on a football field averaging 5.9 yards per carry already had four touchdowns on the year he's going to come back and and be a force and i'm so excited for it yeah absolutely i mean this offense in, in cleveland is definitely something that benefits having both Hunt and Chubb, right? Hunt didn't go out there and absolutely kill it with no Nick Chubb. I think he really fits into that role that they had planned at the beginning of the year. And with Chubb coming back, the offense goes back to what it was there at the beginning of the season. And everybody benefits fantasy-wise from it. So absolutely, way to start off the show with some good news, Ethan. I mean, now I'm happy. Now you've put me in a good mood. Now now everything else is gravy from here because I'm I'll happy. be honest it's all downhill from here it is it's all downhill we don't have much other good news to go over but uh we'll, we'll try our best I mean this could be looked at a couple different ways how about we talk about Christian McCaffrey first because this is somebody who you know we saw back out on the field last week and he's scoring 20 plus fantasy points and we're all just like all right he's back we're good and then all of a sudden you look over there fourth quarter you see him on the sidelines and he's kind of wincing and everybody did a collective holy sh- because they're like, oh, God, not again. Uh, what's going on with Christian McCaffrey? This is not ideal, Jake. He's dealing with a shoulder sprain of some sort. Uh, there's no official diagnosis yet out on McCaffrey. I do think it's some type of AC joint sprain. Uh, he's for sure been already ruled out for this week, week 10. He got a second opinion, and it seemed like it was a positive opinion. So, there's a chance he comes back next week. I still think this is more of a pain management issue. Uh, I'm not holding my breath for him to come back this next week, but as long as he avoids the IR, there's a good chance that he returns within the next two weeks. So not great. You hate to see a guy that just can't seem to get healthy, but we're seeing a lot of stars this year deal with just injury after injury after injury. And so it, it, it sucks, but if you had Mike Davis, you're going to be able to fire him up again this week, and then you're hoping for Christian McCaffrey to return either next week or the week after that. Yeah, now if he's able to play through it, is there any added risk? I mean, being a running back, he's going to hit that shoulder almost every time he touches the ball. He's either going to get hit on it or land on it. Is that something that could just get progressively worse if they don't give him time to heal? It could. There is a chance that it could get worse, uh, but I don't think that if, if he's playing – it means they're pretty confident that it's going to you know, be okay. So uh, I think if he plays, it's a good sign that he'll be fine. Uh, but just know, again, we're probably dealing more with the pain management issue. I think we're going to see if he does come back, probably more Mike Davis mixed in. They kind of went straight to 100% McCaffrey, which 
if you're Christian McCaffrey, you probably are thrilled with, but uh, I think that they're learning their lesson that they, they need to give him a little bit more rest, a little bit, uh, a few more series off, which will take 80% Christian McCaffrey at this point. Yeah. I mean, what do you think the owners experienced? I have him in one league, only one, but I mean, you went from sheer desperation from not having him to sheer excitement for two and a half hours. I mean, you're literally walking around with a chub yourself after seeing him out there. And then you go straight to, you know, misery, the pit of misery once again. And that's got it. That's got it. It's got to suck. Yeah, it, it, it does. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> sucks. I have Christian McCaffrey in a few leagues and it wasn't fun, but you know, this is football. This is what happens. This is what makes fantasy fun. You know, you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to, to learn on the fly. So uh, we're hoping to get him back before the end of the fantasy season, which sadly we're getting close to the end of the fantasy season. Uh, we're already in double week week 10 double digit weeks this is crazy but uh we're hoping to get him back sooner rather than later at least hopefully before the fantasy playoffs all right well speaking of sucking there's nothing worse than starting a player on your roster who you have a great feeling about they have a great matchup and having them getting hurt early on in the game and we're going to talk about david johnson next houston texans what's it looking like for david johnson Johnson's dealing with a concussion. He hasn't practiced as of Thursday. The team appears to be preparing for Duke Johnson to be an every down back this week. So I'm saying there's a pretty good chance that David is not going to be cleared in time. Uh, Duke Johnson does become, become kind of an interesting RB2 option against the Browns. I don't hate it. He's a pass catcher. Um, he, hopefully you could have picked him up on waivers. There not a lot of the leagues where he was rostered. So if you had a chance to pick him up, there's a good chance you're going to be able to start him this week. Now, there's some video circulating the interwebs and social media of Austin Eckler, and people are starting to lose their mind because dude's out there running 50%. Now, don't get me wrong. That's great. <laughs> I'd love to see an actual video of him moving because that is the progression, but are, are, are we getting a little bit too excited here with Austin Eckler too quick anyway? I think we are getting a little too excited too quick on Austin Eckler. Uh, he's coming back from a hamstring strain. I've, I saw the videos. This always cracks me up as a, as a PT because we're seeing him go through what I would consider kind of that phase three, that last phase of rehab before you can start replicating sport again. And people think he's playing in the NFL like this week. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. I wish it did. Uh, but we're still a few weeks out, I think, with with Eckler. The initial reports were that he was going to miss four to six weeks. Uh, I warned that it was going to be even longer than that. Sunday marked six weeks on the dot. And I again, I just don't think he's going to be ready uh, as of this week, probably not even next week. We're looking for maybe another week or two, uh, probably closer to two weeks from now. But there is a good chance that he does return before the end of the season. The only thing that makes me a little cautious to like guarantee that is that this team is at two and six. And so it's just hard to predict exactly how hard they're going to push him to come back when they're not really going to be playing for the playoffs anytime soon. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is if they're out of contention, why you know risk future further injury to, to one of your star players? Just not worth it. But yeah, definitely something to pay attention to. Be excited to see him on tape. Just don't be excited to throw him into your rosters yet. What about... Preston Williams of the Miami Dolphins. He seemed to be one of the top targets of Tua uh, just last week, and then he went down to injury, and now all of a sudden, maybe this was Tua's binky. Is he going to have his binky? I don't think he is going to have his binky. He's dealing. No Williams binky. is dealing with a foot injury. He was already placed on IR. That means he's going to miss the next three weeks minimum. If this foot is fractured, it could easily be a, a fantasy season ender for Williams. I mean, we're talking multiple weeks that we could be without him. We're already kind of pushing up right onto the edge of the end of the fantasy season. So uh, with Williams, uh, this team, again, rebuilding another situation where, you know, they're they're second they're actually second in the division it seems crazy because it doesn't seem like anyone in that division is playing well uh so there, i guess there is a chance that they're competing still for the playoffs but i would say it's a pretty small chance uh they're not going to push williams to come back super quick uh hopefully this provides a little bit more juice for mike gusecki i've been kind of disappointed with him this year and i think again just like we saw last season without preston williams Devonte parker is going to get a big jump in terms of target and production. Yeah, absolutely. That's the main takeaway here is 
We saw this last year, right? Preston Williams went down with an ACL tear. Devontae Parker went on a crazy stretch. That's what we could see here, you know, to end the season uh, here in, in 2020. So those are some of the, the bigger names, but we got a lot of names to rapid fire through. So we'll start our quick hitters section, and we're going to lead it off with a couple of Eagles. Miles Sanders and Alshon Jeffrey, do the Eagles have some weapons finally coming back? They do. Miles Sanders, Alshon Jeffrey, both of these guys return to practice this week. I actually expect both of them to play. Miles Sanders, instant start for me against the Giants. If he is healthy, you have to play him. Uh, while I do kind of want to wait a little bit on Alshon before I trust him on my fantasy team especially, it is good to see that this offense is finally getting healthy, getting more people in. Uh, it's good for Carson Wentz, especially to just have another body that they can throw out there. This team has had the worst luck the last two years, as far as keeping pass catchers healthy. So anytime you can get another one to throw out there, another body, it, it's a good thing. So we're going to wait and see on Alshon, but Miles Sanders, if he's playing, which I expect him to, uh, you can start him with confidence. Love it. I love the return of Miles Sanders. What about Chris Godwin? Is he somebody that we should just kind of just, play it by ear for a while it really is kind of a tough a tough situation here he's dealing with this finger fracture he was able to play last week despite my initial belief that the cast would limit him uh it didn't stop him from playing but it certainly stopped him from being productive only had a seven point fantasy performance not what we want out of a guy like chris godwin expect him to remain hampered as long as he has this cast on his hand and i would say that it's it's kind of a coin flip it really depends on who you have that you can play i'm not really trusting him in most of my lineups where i have other options i just don't know if how effective he's going to be with this cast yeah plus i mean he's not the only target in town right i mean there's a lot of other people that are split with it's not like he's getting this huge target share to begin with makes him even more risky what about moving on to green bay and aaron jones we saw him return last week and all of a sudden he started that game we got like the first five or six touches of the game so apparently he seemed fine last week he did. He looked pretty good last week. I was a little surprised that they played him on a short week, but again, if he was ready to go, uh, that that team, the green, uh, the uh, the Green Bay Packers, is very conservative. So they're not put. They're not just trotting guys out there at less than you know, basically full capacity. Uh, so again, didn't see an RB one performance out of him. He did kind of slow down towards the end of the that game. Uh, but he practiced in full on Thursday this week, and I think he's going to have a much starter, a much stronger start against the Jags and their poor run defense. I think Aaron Jones is going to is going to return to form this week. Yep, absolutely. What about a couple of brownies now going double brown? Austin Hooper, Jarvis Landry. Hooper is recovering from that emergency appendectomy he had a few weeks ago. Landry continues to deal with this surgically repaired hip. Uh, both of them were full participants in practice, and I think both are playable this week against the Texans of a horrendous secondary. Uh, expect them both to be on the field. Hooper's kind of a low-end tight end one, and Jarvis, I think, could actually have a pretty good game. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Everything's going Nick Chubb's way anyway, right, Ethan? That's right. That's right, going full Chubb. Uh, what about Kenyon Drake? Originally, reports said that he may be out for a while. It hasn't been that long. Could Kenyon Drake be on the return already? He, I do think there's a good chance here. He's dealing with this high ankle sprain. Normally, you're looking at about three weeks, but we had some rumblings last week that he was doing better than the team expected him to be. Uh, he did get a limited practice in to start this week after missing last week's game. I'd say right now there's about a 70% chance he returns. The team could be cautious with him with, with Chase Edmonds kind of in the wings here. They could choose to keep him out, but I don't think that there's that's a guarantee like it was last week. I think that there's a fairly good chance that Kenyon Drake returns. Now, how effective he is, how much they use him, I'm probably not going to start him and expect much out of him, uh, but just know that he there is a good chance that he plays. Yeah, even if it's just a series here or there to spell Edmonds, you know, you know, not rush him right back into it. Definitely not worth the risk of a fantasy start. Justin Jackson in Los Angeles. We've already talked about Eckler. What about Jackson? Jackson's dealing with a knee sprain, and he hasn't been able to practice yet as of Thursday night. He has been officially ruled out as of this recording, but I, I'm sorry, he hasn't been officially ruled out, uh, but I don't expect him to play. Raheem Mostert was kind of in a, a similar situation uh, where he was dealing with that. He's been, you know, dealing with, with his knee injury. 
Um, the, and Kyle Shanahan already ruled him out. So, you know, Justin Jackson, Raheem Mostert, we're not getting those guys this week, uh, but um, do expect them to come back uh, potentially in the next week or two. Yep, exactly. And then, hey, you never know. By then, we may have Austin Eckler back. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, now we're going double Seahawk. We're doubling up a lot tonight. Uh, what about Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde? Yeah, neither one of these guys appears ready to return this week. Hyde's hamstring injury does seem to be healing more slowly than Carson's midfoot sprain, but it doesn't look like either one of them is going to be ready to play this week. It's another week of DJ Dallas and Travis Homer in all likelihood. Not sure I love either of those guys when they're both playing. Uh, Homer did see a lot more in the past game, so I guess he could be kind of a low-end flex option for you. But uh, Chris Carson, Carlos Hyde, we're still waiting. Uh, we're still waiting. Yeah, and that's a long wait because a lot of people need some Chris Carson back. Had they had they paid attention in the draft guide, they would have known that Chris Carson had these risks of injuries. But moving forward, what about Kenny G, Kenny Galladay in Detroit? Yeah, haven't gotten any more clarity on this hip injury with Kenny Galladay. The team actually debated putting him on an IR last week, but he wants to try to return. Remember, he's in a contract year. He's really trying to prove that he is worth this big contract. So he didn't want to lock in three games missed. I think there's still a good chance that he misses three games total with this. Uh, but again, not much to go on right now. I don't expect him to return this week. Uh, and I think next week is, is seriously in question as well. Well, I'd like to say that, hey, maybe this means a huge bump in targets for TJ Hawkinson, but the next guy we need to talk about is TJ Hawkinson. Do we need to worry about him too? I think we do. He's dealing with a toe injury, probably turf toe, but it hasn't been diagnosed for that officially. He did show up last week in the injury report with a toe injury, but managed to play through it. But this week, He's been held out of practice Wednesday and Thursday. If he doesn't even get a limited session in on Friday, I think there's a good chance that he doesn't play. Uh, Marvin Jones, I guess, is going to be the guy. I mean, there's really not much as far as pass catching options. Uh, Danny Amendola, I guess, could be uh, another guy that you can kind of slide in with a little more confidence if Hawkinson and Galladay are out, but I'm probably just staying away from all of these guys. Maybe it means more DeAndre Swift in the running game and the short passing game. That's we'll right. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Uh, Joe Mixon. I mean, he, Joe Mixon's supposed to be back, Ethan. He's supposed to be coming off the bye week and ready to dominate the second half of the year. Where the hell is Joe Mixon? This really surprised me. He has not practiced yet this week. I thought for sure – they were going to give him the bye week. He was going to come back. No problem. It's not looking that way. This foot sprain is worse than we thought. I think we're looking at potentially a Cam Newton situation from last year where the team's kind of hush-hush about it, and then we find out it's actually a huge deal. He does, Joe Mixon that is, have a date with my undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm not surprised he isn't in a hurry to come back, but I, I am kind of disappointed because I did think we were going to see Mixon this week. It's not looking likely. Uh, no, not really. But, I mean, we're not supposed to talk about Big Ben and his knees, though. Are you worried about old man Big Ben's knees? I worry about Big Ben and his health every day as a Steelers fan. Because but you know I which am not would... overly concerned about his old man knees you know, quite yet. You That's know a lot of would... body to hold up on. The, the knees wear out quick when you're that big. So, Big Ben... Having some knee issues, not exactly surprised. Do you uh, do you know which team would not be undefeated if their quarterback was Mason Rudolph? Uh, yeah, definitely. We've seen that. We've seen this play out, Jake, and I don't want to be reminded <laughs> about all those bad memories from 2019. Right, cool. We will move on then to Daryl Henderson, another one of these guys coming off a bye week that we expected to be basically a full go, but he's still another one of these guys has that lingering issue. Yeah, he's dealing with a, a thigh contusion. Uh, he missed practice on Wednesday, but the coach came out and said that he expects Henderson to play. I don't really like him as a start this week, honestly. Uh, he's banged up. That He's in a full-blown committee. It's just not looking good. I just don't – I don't trust Henderson this week. There's just – there's something about this that I just – the team was really confident that he's going to play, but he's not practicing. It just seems very odd to me. Uh, again, probably staying away from Henderson this week to, until we get some clarity. Yeah, we had to worry about Malcolm Brown and even Cam Akers at times when he was healthy. 
if he's banged up, there's only that opportunity that those other guys get more touches. Uh, what about the last guy here on the list, Mark Ingram of the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, not looking, uh, not looking bueno for Mr. Mark Ingram, is it? No, it is not. Again, he's dealing with that calf strain. He was limited on Wednesday, so it looked like something positive was happening. But then he got downgraded to a DNP. Did not practice on Thursday. Not a good sign for his chances to play. Anytime you see an in-week downgrade in practice, it's not good. It's not a good thing. So J.K. Dobbins, uh, Gus Edwards, you're looking at those two as you know start worthy again this week. I just want, can we just get one game where we see what J.K. Dobbins can do with like I don't know 20 touches? Can just That'd be me. Great. That'd be great. I think we're going to see it in 2021. Jake, why you got to hit me like that? I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Like, got to do this. I think it's just going to be next year. I think they're giving him this this year to to learn the offense and hang back. Plus, it's not like Lamar's out there setting the world on fire either. Well, apparently, everyone, all the defenses know their plays. So, yeah, I'm not surprised that no one. That's a problem. If if the defenses know your plays, that's a problem. I mean, it's like playing Madden at some point with a 12 year old. But they're screen peeking. Wow, they're just, they're they got the playbooks. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that, that's an issue. All right, well, hey, that was a lot of names here for Week 10. Not a lot of overly bad news. We got some good news possibly coming here in the next couple of weeks with some big names like Austin Eckler. Hopefully Christian McCaffrey can come back. I mean, Nick Chubb coming back. Though, I mean, my heart's still beating fast from, from the Nick Chubb news. I'm not going to lie. Every league I have, man, he's going right back in to my RB1 slot. Uh, but, hey, like you said, it's already Week 10, Ethan. The fantasy season – is drawing towards a, an end here pretty soon. We got some playoff runs to make, so make sure you stay on top of all the information that we're providing to make sure you have the best possible lineup set on a weekly basis. Ethan, I appreciate the time going through all the injuries here once again. He's throwing up the deuces to everybody. As always, Jake. Yeah. You know I'm your bae. Yeah, you're, you're my bae. I, I don't think I've ever called you that. <laughs> that hey, who gave right you off. your chub back? You did. On that note, we're out of here. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week. We appreciate the support, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. See you guys.